Tonight, legal fireworks over value-added tax to take a new dimension as Court of Appeal in Abuja grants request by Lagos State to be joined in the suit, direct hearing of case at the Appeal Court in Port Harcourt. Ahead of tomorrow's 61st independence anniversary, calls for unity of country resonates. For military head of state, General Abubakar says equity and fairness will end secessionist agitations. PDP committee recommends zoning of its national chairmanship position to the north, says decision is in line with the party's constitution. And police squad storms prison in the Ecuadorian port city of Guayaquil following rival gang war that has killed 116 inmates. Plus, more international news from our London studio. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria postpones planned launch of e Naira tomorrow, October the 1st, to celebrate the country's 61st independence anniversary. On sports news tonight, Super Eagles technical advisor Gennett Roy invites 23 players for the FIFA World Cup qualifier against the Central African Republic next week. And from Abuja, Chief of Army Staff restates need for a comprehensive approach involving military and non-military strategies in tackling terrorism in the Northeast region. The value-added tax discourse may remain in the front burner for some time to come as the Court of Appeal in Abuja has granted the request of the Lagos State Government to be joined in the suit challenging the collection of VAT by state. According to the presiding judge, all processes filed are to be served on the Attorney General of Lagos State. Meanwhile, the court has also directed that the case should be heard at the Appellate Court in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, and has adjourned the suit to October the 7th. On September 10, a three-man panel of justices of the Court of Appeal in Abuja granted permission to Lagos State to seek to join the suit over the value-added tax collection between the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, and the River State Government in the interest of justice. In the suit, the Attorney General of Lagos State, Mr. Moyosore Onibanjo, told the panel of judges led by Justice Haruna Samani that the state would be impacted by the outcome of the appeal by FIRS. He therefore urged the courts to uphold the application for joinder, arguing that the case of joinder sought to prevent multiplicity of action. His position was supported by the Council to the River State Government, but Council to the FIRS, Mr. Mahmoud Magaji, opposed the application for joinder, while relying on Section 243 of the Constitution. He adds that the Lagos State Government was not a party to the trial court in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. The three-man panel of the Court of Appeal rejected the objections by the FIRS and the Attorney General of the Federation and proceeded to join Lagos State as a third respondent. Delivering his ruling, Justice Samani held that Lagos State had effectively shown that it has sufficient interest to protect by being made a party in the case. Well, the, the uh, court has uh, allowed the Honorable the Attorney General of Lagos to join as third respondent in the appeal, and matter adjourned to seventh in Potakot. When we get to Potakot, we'll know what to do. Oh, but the matter was never in Abuja. It's just because of vacation. And um, the matter is Potakot. There's a division of court of appeal in Potakot. And so we'll go to Potakot. The court then ordered that all processes so far filed in the case be served on the Attorney General of Lagos State. And as Nigeria celebrates 61 years of independence tomorrow, October the 1st, the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has urged Nigerians to unite for the progress of the country and continue to keep faith with their fatherland. Senator Lawan, in a message amidst the journey to nationhood, has been eventful with enormous challenges, but he says the country can be proud of the progress we have made, draw lessons from the missteps, and rededicate ourselves to our historic mission of nation building. In the lower chamber, the speaker 
Right Honorable Femi Bajabiamila is also calling for unity as the country celebrates 61 years of independence. In a statement, the speaker called on Nigerians to be more united for the common purpose of building a country that meets the best expectations of all Nigerians. Citing the well-known aphorism, united we stand and divided we fall, Right Honorable Bajabiamila said unity is priceless, urging every Nigerian to drop their sentiments and work together for a better nation. The Speaker reassured Nigerians that the Ninth Assembly will always give the necessary legislative interventions to other arms of government to smoothen the task of governance. Well, still in the spirit of celebrating Nigeria's 61st independence anniversary, former military head of state General Abdul Salam Abubakar says only through entrenching equity, justice and fairness could Nigeria effectively put an end to secessionist agitation. General Abubakar asked Nigerians to remain hopeful and firm, noting that the country must remain united despite its numerous challenges. While addressing journalists at his hilltop residence in Mina, he commended the security forces for the sacrifice they have made in the fight against insurgency, banditry and other forms of crime. The federal, uh, federal government or state government, let them ensure there is peace equity and justice where every citizen of a country or in a state is given equal right to be part and parcel of uh, the union the people or the brains behind this secessionist movement have a feeling one way or the other they have been excluded in the scheme of things Rightly or wrongly, this is what they feel, and they feel that the best way is to opt out. How do we stop these succession ideas? I repeat, there must be equity and justice, and there must be an effort to carry everybody along in the governance, in developmental uh, provide, uh, provision of uh, infrastructure, and again in appointing various people into various uh, offices. There must be equity and justice, and there should be equal representation. I think if this is done, um, we will kill this uh, agitation. And to party politics, speculations about what part of a country will produce the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party may have been put to rest, as the party's zoning committee has recommended that the position be zoned to the north. Addressing journalists at the end of its meeting today, the chairman of the committee and governor of Enugu State, Ifayu Gwai, said his committee resolved that the south should swap all current positions in the party with the North. The committee was mandated by the National Executive Committee of the party to zone the national offices to be contested by all PDP members at its national convention scheduled for October the 30th and 31st. That the mandate of the committee does not include zoning of offices of the president, vice president, and other executive and legislative offices of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the decision of the committee to zone the party offices does not in any way affect the executive and legislative offices in Nigeria. The zoning of offices on PDP has traditionally been between the north and the south of Nigeria. The decision of PDP zoning committee is in line with the constitution of the party on zoning and rotation of party and national offices in the interest of justice, equity, and fairness. Consequently, the current offices being held by officers in the southern zone of the country, namely southwest, southeast, and south-south zone, should swap places with offices currently in the northern zone of Nigeria, namely northwest, northeast, and north-central zones. We want to thank the party, 
especially the National Executive Committee that set up this committee on September 9, 2021, for finding us worthy to serve the party in the capacity as zoning committee members. We shall pass on our recommendations to the National Executive Committee of the party through the National Working Committee of the party. Meanwhile, the Yoba State Governor and the Chairman of the All Progressives Congress's Caretaker Convention Planning Committee, May Malabuni, has received 11 Anambra lawmakers who defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. The lawmakers include five serving and four former House of Representatives members, as well as two members of the State House of Assembly. Governor Buni, who congratulated the new members, said they made the right decision by joining the ruling party and bringing their people to the center. The defectors commended Governor Buni for providing the APC the right leadership and promised to deliver their constituencies to the party in the Anambra governorship election. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, Deputy Senate President, Ove Omagege, the governors of Imo, Kogi, Kano, Chigawa, and Kebi states joined the party chairman to receive the new members. And over to the National Assembly, where just a day after the Senate asked the President to proscribe bandits and their sponsors as terrorists, the House of Representatives is making the same call. The matter was raised by the Chairman of the House Committee on Defense, Representative Babajimi Benson, who stated that this will officially bring the activities of bandits and their sponsors within the purview of the Terrorism Prevention Act and any persons associated with such groups can then be legally prosecuted and sentenced to penalties specified in the Act. Meanwhile, the House also plans to investigate allegations of mismanagement or diversion of funds by MDAs. Our correspondent, Terry Ikumi, has the details. We're specific, but I guess the committees will... The Green Chamber is scanty as lawmakers settle down for the last plenary session of the week. Two motions of urgent public importance are raised, one of which tows the line of the Senate calling for the prescription of bandits as terrorists. This will underline the determination of the government to combat the wave of criminality and murders conducted by bandits all over the country. The declaration of bandits as terrorists can be done through a prescription order. That will serve as added impetus for our brave security personnel to redouble their efforts at dealing with this menace. With this position by both chambers of the National Assembly, it would seem that lawmakers have had it up to their necks after daily debates on issues of insecurity, especially banditry, in recent times. Meanwhile, the attention of the House is also drawn to another matter of urgent public importance on the need to investigate an alleged incessant abuse and disregard of the 2021 Appropriation Act by ministries, departments and agencies of government. Take for instance, a project is in an, is in an M agency, an MDA. Somebody goes there to say, okay, listen, I heard that 40% has been released across board. And a project that I have in this agency is not being kick-started. And the agency goes on to say, look, we have not received any money from the ministry. And the facts are there that across board, even without target, that monies have been released, and yet agency is claiming that they've not released it. The budget of the National Assembly of the government is a blueprint a blueprint of what the government seeks to do and its priority areas. If you divert those monies to other projects, uh, it's clearly uh, economic sabotage. If the budget will be presented in the next couple of weeks where we're going to suspend plenary and do our work, but between now and then, we need to have a clear understanding of what has happened uh, to this motion. The House mandates all its committees to thoroughly investigate the agencies they supervise while also mandating its finance and appropriation committees to specifically liaise with the finance ministry to ascertain the releases to government agencies in compliance with the 2021 Appropriation Act. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. In part two after the break, the Chief of Defense Staff gives assurance of the military's commitment to ensuring the nation's farmlands are safer for farmers to return to their profession. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the news at 10. If you're just joining us, here's a recap of our major stories. Legal fireworks over value-added tax to take a new dimension as Court of Appeal in Abuja grants request by Lagos to be joined in the suit. Directs hearing of case at the Appeal Court in Port Harcourt. Ahead of tomorrow's 61st Independence Anniversary, calls for unity of country resonates. Former military head of state, General Abubakar, says equity and fairness will end secessionist agitations. PDP committee recommends zoning of its national chairmanship position to the north, says decision is in line with the party's constitution. And police squad storms prison in the Ecuadorian port city of Guayaquil following rival gang war that has killed 116 police. The president was today joined by other national leaders in Abuja, the nation's capital, as proceedings to mark the 61st Independence Day celebration of Nigeria started. According to the president, President Mohamed Buhari, it is imperative for all Nigerians to come together and work to achieve positive results for Nigerians and drive economic development. I'm very delighted to be addressing you today as we conclude the activities marking our 60th anniversary celebration as a nation. Looking at the activities lined up for today's event gives me a great deal of comfort that no matter the challenges we face, as we go through the nation building process, we will always come out better. Nigeria is undoubtedly a blessed nation with abundant human and natural resources underpinned by a very rich social cultural diversity which needs to be positively harnessed to forge a greater Nigeria. For this diversity to translate into positive gains that would ensure an inclusive, equitable and sustainable growth requires that we Nigerians consistently embrace the ethics and values that unite us in spite of our diversity. Appreciate our individual and collective role in nation building and forging ahead as a people with a common vision as a strong and indivisible nation. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari. Elsewhere, the Chief of Defense Staff General Loki Rabo is reiterating the readiness of the armed forces to ensure that farmlands are safe for farmers to return to the field. He made the promise during the launch of Zero Hunger Initiative by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons in Abuja. General Rabo explains that President Mohamed Buhari has given the military a mandate to ensure that farmers return to their farms to provide sufficient food for the country. Well, let's now cross over to our Abuja studio for more on the news at 10 with Terry Ikumi. Well, good evening. A comprehensive approach must be adopted in addressing the insecurity challenges in the Northeast region, which will involve military and non-military approaches to deal with terrorism. This is according to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, who was addressing participants at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in JOS. In a separate lecture delivered at the same occasion, the Borono State Governor Babagana Zulum also talked about the approach to solving the security challenges, which should involve a socio-economic and political dimension besides the military option. Efforts towards finding solutions to insurgency and insecurity in the Northeast region shifted to the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in Kuru, Joss Plateau State where participants for Senior Executive Course 43 were inundated with probable solutions to the ongoing challenges of insurgency and terrorism activity. <laughs> with the theme for the week addressing peace, conflict studies and crisis management, the participants were opportuned to be addressed in two separate papers by the military, the Chief of Army Staff and a civilian, the Governor of Borno State, on various approaches to bring an end to the security challenge. At a core component of non-kinetic operations. 
The Chief of Army Staff, in his paper, which addresses the importance of civil military cooperation and the conduct of non kinetic operations in the Northeast, emphasizes the need to engage stakeholders in the fight against insurgency through persuasion and interagency collaboration. The engagement of the stakeholder is based on realization that military force alone cannot win an ideological battle. The stakeholder, therefore, well, significant influence to serve as the conflict between the state and the masses in counter violent extremism, deep radicalization, and ensuring civil military cohesion. For the Bonus State Governor, issues of shortage of security personnel, youth unemployment, as well as socioeconomic factors should be looked into for any meaningful achievement in the war against insurgency. Go to the slums of Kano. Go to the slums of Maduka. See the number of unemployed youths. It's a matter of great concern. So we need to address all these problems. We need to address the climate problem. Because, because of unemployment, these young men are trying to get weapons from our neighboring countries. They will send it in Nigeria because With the various methods suggested in ending insurgency and terrorism, especially in the Northeast, government at different levels are expected to endeavor to implement the kinetic and non-kinetic operations to overcome the security challenges. Meanwhile, the Delta State Governor, Dr. Ifanyo Okoa, has signed the Delta State Livestock Breeding, Rearing and Marketing Regulation Bill 2021 into law. Speaking shortly after a sent into the bill at the government house in Asaba, the governor urged the federal government to assist interested farmers to establish ranches across the country, while also encouraging cattle breeders to embrace ranching. He described the arrangement as a new and convenient way of rearing animals in order to prevent clashes between farmers and herders and ensure food security in the country. Also today, Ogun State joined the group of states in the southern part of the country to embrace the anti-open grazing law. While signing the bill into law in his office in Abiyokuta, the governor said the move has become imperative to protect all critical stakeholders and their businesses in the state. According to him, an implementation committee to be headed by the State Commissioner for Agriculture with membership of other critical stakeholders would fashion out the modalities for the full and smooth takeoff of the implementation of the law within six months. Now there's tension in Ajali, Orumba North local government area of Anambra State, where armed men have attacked a police station, killing an undisclosed number of officers. The Commissioner of Police, Anambra State Command, Tony Olofu, said some yet to be identified heavily armed men stormed the Ajali divisional headquarters of the state and fired sporadically at police personnel on duty. They were, however, promptly engaged by the police officers before they fled the scene. Unfortunately, two police personnel and a civilian sustained gunshot injuries, while a patrol vehicle was set ablaze and the police station was partly torched. He said a joint team of police and military personnel immediately trailed the fleeing attackers and intercepted them along Okwa Jali Road before the attackers escaped with gunshot injuries. In a similar development, an incident of attack on a motorist was also recorded along the Nobinewi Road of the state, where some hoodlums reportedly shot the driver and abducted the other occupants of the vehicle. Investigations into the incident are ongoing while efforts are being intensified to identify and rescue the occupants of the vehicle. While condemning the unfortunate incident, the Commissioner of Police called on residents to be calm and go about their lawful businesses as the police, the military and other security agencies are already rejigging strategies to contain the situation. While an unconfirmed number of policemen died in the Ajali attack, no fewer than three persons were said to have died in the Nobi attack. Two members of a suspected kidnap gang have been killed by operatives of the Lagos State Police Command in Imotaimore Forest in the Ikurudu area of the state. The police also arrested two other suspects and recovered arms and ammunition. Addressing journalists on the operation, the Commissioner of Police in Lagos State, Hakimo Dumusu, explained that the command is rejuvenating its operational strategies in tackling crime. 
Now, when the News at 10 returns, Central Bank of Nigeria postpones planned launch of e Naira tomorrow, October the 1st, to celebrate the country's 61st independence. That's on Business News. Join us again. Well, in the spirit of a call for unity, the former governor of Imo State and seven Senator Rocha Sokorocha today celebrated his 59th birthday at the International Conference Center Abuja with a call on Nigerians for peaceful coexistence through education. Speaking at the event as well, Vice President Professor Yemio Shimbaje described the celebrant as a man of the people and asked Nigerians to work and pray for the unity of Nigeria. The celebrant, Senator Okorija, said he's celebrating in the midst of a security crisis of the nation to exemplify forgiveness. I know it's very difficult to reconcile. I have the same challenge. I have pains in my heart. I have pains in my heart. For those of you who do not know, I have enough reason to justify why I must want this country to tear down or why I must want the government to fail because I felt I've not been well treated. But not looking at what is happening to me, I look beyond this period and see my children and their children's children. That is why we must have make sacrifice for peace. This is not the time to count right, whether you are right or whether you are wrong. Right will lead us into disaster. And wrong will lead us into disaster, but right will help us. I want to appeal to Nigeria that do me a favor and begin to embrace each other. And as we are seated here, we can dramatize the peace of this country and unity of this country. I hereby declare, let the peace reign from Sokoto to Imo. Let peace reign. From Lagos to Kwara, let peace reign. From APDP to APC, let peace reign. From Governor Rocha Sokrocha and Hope Uzodima, let peace reign. This is some company news. Aero Contractors, one of Nigeria's oldest aviation companies, has taken delivery of two Airbus 320 airplanes from Heston Airline in Lithuania. The managing director of Aero Contractors, Captain Abdullahi Mahmoud, and other top officials of the airline received the aircraft at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. According to the managing director, the new delivery will help to boost the company's fleet and provide the needed capacity for more efficient services to passengers. The new Aero Contractors Airbus A320 touches down at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. The aircraft taxis to the tarmac, where the second Airbus is already parked, and it's welcomed to the fleet with water cannons. <laughs> Top management of aero contractors then proceed for the inspection. <laughs> With a cabin length of 27.5 meters and 3.7 meters in width, the aircraft has a cockpit furnished with state-of-the-art facilities. The Airbus A320 breathes an irresistible air of comfort for passengers. Addressing a news conference after the inspection, officials of the airline explained the rationale behind the new acquisitions. We are diversifying our business, increasing our capacity, and making travel easy for our esteemed customers. And so by this, we are just going to increase our network, but we are going to publish the schedule of our new um, network that we are going to increase by next week. Definitely passengers will know exactly where we are. It is something of joy to see that um, an airline that was um, the oldest airline in the country is coming up uh, strong and is bringing in capacity. Uh, we are approaching the festive season uh, with uh, these two aircrafts, I believe uh, it will go a long way. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority pledges to support Aero Contractors' new drive for efficiency. I can say Aero has been tested. So we will look at you, we will give you all the support that the regulatory authority needs to give you so that you can fly safe. 
The A320 aircraft is in four sizes of A318, 319, 320 and 321, representing the most successful and versatile jetliner family ever. Now for the day's top business stories, here's Anne Oaudo on Business News. Thanks a lot, Hayade. Hello and welcome to Business News. Let's begin with the Central Bank of Nigeria postponing the official launch of its digital currency, the e-Naira. According to the CBN spokesperson, Mr. Osita Wanchiob, the decision to postpone the unveiling of the e-Naira scheduled for tomorrow, October the 1st, is to avoid any distraction from the country's 61st independence anniversary. Nevertheless, the CBN assures that the bank and other partners are working to ensure a seamless process for the benefit of all. Meanwhile, no new date has been announced for the launch. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC Limited, has laid the foundation for the construction of the 50 megawatts Maduguri emergency power project in Borno State, the first ever in the country. The 50 megawatts gas turbine power plant is expected to generate electricity to the city of Meduguri and its environs. The groundbreaking ceremony was performed today at the group managing director of the NNPC Limited, Dr. Melekiari, and the Borno State Governor, Babagana Zulum. The MEP is a federal government intervention strategy aimed at tackling the perpetual power outage in the state, largely caused by vandalism and critical power infrastructure. Conversations are ongoing around the adoption of technology to advance operations on the Nigerian capital market and create a platform for local and global investors. According to the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Lamido Yuguda, the adoption of technology will require businesses to restructure their own models as it opens up new opportunities as well as changing changes in the regulatory framework. Mr. Yuguda was speaking today at the NGX Technovation Conference. The equities market has sustained its bull run at the close of trade today, ending the month of September with a drum roll. Bukala Samuel Wemimo has the details. Welcome to the stock market report. The equities market, which got off to a slow start today, ends the holiday shortened week with resounding stock gains sustained from yesterday's trading session. What a way to go. This resounding recovery from the intraday low has propelled the benchmark performance index into the 40,000 level as it rose higher today by 1.59%. There was also a spike in the overall turnover. Volume of shares rose by more than 120% to a little over a billion units from 474 million units traded yesterday, while value jumped to 7.4 billion naira. However, sectoral performance was mostly subdued, but not sufficient to dampen the winning streak as the industrial goods index countered the loss all thanks to market bellwether, Dongote Cement. Its share price increased by 7.28% at the close of today's session. Shares of Dongote, still the toast of investors, topped today's trade, contributing about 1.13 billion naira to the overall market value, while University Press, PLC, led 19 gainers. Now, this is something worth taking into the Independence Day celebration tomorrow. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Back to you. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Omawa. Do I wish you a profitable October? It's back to you, Coyote. Well, thanks, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, police squad storms prison in the Ecuadorian port city of Guayaquil following rival gang war that has killed 116 inmates. And more international news from our London studio. Stay with us. Desperate families have been gathering outside Ecuador's littoral penitentiary in the city of Guayaquil, awaiting news about loved ones as over 400 police officers try to bring the jail under control after 116 people were killed in fighting. 
The gang-related violence which first broke out on Tuesday is the worst in Ecuador's history. Simon Pusey has more in Around the World in 5. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in 5. At least 116 people have been killed, including a number of beheadings during clashes in the most deadly act of violence ever reported in Ecuador's prison system. There were angry scenes outside the prison at the Penitentiaria del Litoral in Guias province, with family members of people inside desperate to hear news of their loved ones. 400 police officers have now entered the prison to try and restore order. The fight first broke out on Tuesday between rival gangs linked to drug cartels. This is the latest in a litany of incidents in Ecuadorian prisons. In February, 79 prisoners were killed in fights at four jails. North Korea's leader has offered to restore inter-Korean hotlines next month. In a quote published by state media, Kim Jong-un said, reactivating the lines would help realize the desire of the entire Korean nation for recovering cross-border relations. He had tougher words for Washington, accusing the U.S. government of proposing talks without changing its hostile policy to the country. North Korea had severed the hotlines in early August in protest against joint South Korean-U.S. military drills just days after reopening them for the first time in a year. The former French president has been found guilty in a Paris court for illegal campaign financing. Vive la République et vive la France. Nicolas Sarkozy was found guilty of spending tens of millions of euros more on his campaign than was permitted under the law. He will not be jailed, however, and can serve his sentence at home. Mr Sarkozy has denied any wrongdoing and is expected to appeal the ruling. More violence has broken out as an Israeli police officer killed a woman who allegedly tried to stab police in Jerusalem's old city. Another Palestinian gunman was killed by Israeli forces in the West Bank during an overnight raid. The violence comes amid tensions heightened by the deaths of five Palestinians on Sunday. At least four of them were alleged members of the Hamas militant group and died during gun battles as Israeli forces carried out arrest raids in the West Bank. Italy's riot police have clashed with climate activists during a demonstration in Milan where climate ministers are attending a pre-COP26 meeting. Ahead of the UN climate summit in Glasgow next month, climate ministers from around the world met today to set an agenda. Vetting proposals were put forward by Greta Thunberg and other youth activists at the Youth for Climate event earlier this week. A tornado has torn through Australia's rural southeast in New South Wales, causing chaos and damage but reportedly no fatalities. Roofs were ripped off houses and trees were uprooted while power lines were also cut. Police and ambulance crews were called to Meadow Flat, a town of 300 people around 166 kilometres from Sydney, following reports of the tornado. The New South Wales State Emergency Service has issued a warning for people around the state to secure loose items outside their homes. Canada's Prime Minister has urged people to unite on the country's first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, which honours the lost Indigenous children affected by the residential schools system. As a moment to remember and to reflect on the stories we tell. Justin Trudeau said the day was one for all Canadians to reflect at a ceremony on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. Starting in 1831, Canada's residential school system forcibly separated Indigenous children from their families, subjecting them to malnourishment and physical and sexual abuse. Britney Spears has said she is on cloud nine right now in what appears to be a response to a judge suspending her father as her conservator. The singer posted a video of her having a flying lesson shortly after the news with the caption, On Cloud Nine. Spears' lawyer said it was his hope and expectation the conservative ship would be fully terminated at a hearing on the 12th of November. And finally, a rather unusual auction is kicking off online today. Called Machine Hallucinations, the collection is a set of immersive installations and artworks generated using artificial intelligence. The whole collection is tipped to fetch up to $1.95 million when the online auction heads to an end next week. 
And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. In sports news, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has conducted fresh elections into the various boards of the country's sport federations at the MKO Abiola National Stadium Abuja earlier today. Today's election saw the emergence of president and vice president for over 20 sports federations, with some returning re-elected while some produced new presidents. Members of the Super Eagle squad of 1994 have paid courtesy visits to two members of the Federal Executive Council, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, and the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, in appreciation of the federal government's fulfillment of promises made to them for winning the 1994 African Nations Cup in Tunisia. Represented by the standing captain of the team, Augustin Eguavoy, Aloy Agu, Victor Peba, Benedict Yeroa, physical trainer Edema Steven and Daniel Amokachi. The former players expressed gratitude to the federal government for making good the promise they made 27 years ago. If we promise and that promise is not fulfilled, that's an opportunity, a window for people to run away. But today, this is coming to reality now. Um, we all know in one of the stanza of a, of a, a national anthem, uh, when it says, the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. So like it is now, it's never going to be in vain. People like late Keshi, late Yakini, late Okafo, Olia, they have children. It's expected by now their children are also enjoying the fruits of their father's labor. Super Eagles technical advisor Gennett Rohr has invited 23 players for the upcoming World Cup qualifier against the Central African Republic in October. Captain Ahmed Musa headlines the list along with Moses Simon, Kelechi Yanacho, Victor Sime, Paul Onwachu and Samuel Kalu. Well, the Eagles have maximum six points from their first two matches of the qualifiers. Okato will make its debut on the Formula One calendar with the race in November and has signed a 10-year deal to host a Grand Prix from 2023. The Gulf State will fill the vacant slot on this season's schedule on November the 19th to the 21st with a race at its LaSalle circuit known for hosting MotoGP. And that's a wrap in Sports News. It's back to you, Kaidi. Thanks a lot, Ayo. And the main news again. The Court of Appeal in Abuja today granted the request by Lagos State to be joined in a suit on value-added tax and directed that the case be heard at the Appeal Court in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. Also today, the PDP Committee on Zoning recommended that the party's national chairmanship position be zoned to the north. The committee explained that its decision was in line with the PDP constitution. And that's the news at 10. Thank you for watching. I'm Kayo Kikilu. Good night and happy Independence Day anniversary.